Welcome to the uh, final day of Alfresco Summit 2013. And actually, we're, it's beyond the final day. This is the final session of the entire conference. So it's a bittersweet moment here uh, as, uh, as we close this out. And uh, you guys have asked some great questions of the engineering team. We've got quite a motley crew assembled on this uh, stage ready to field your questions. So we have a bunch, so let's get to it. And I've got some that you guys have submitted. If you think of additional ones, then um, we will, you know, take those from the audience. So we have people walking around with mics. All right, so the first thing is, uh, you know, 4.2 just came out. How many people have uh, already been playing around with 4.2? So like a really huge portion of the room. And, oh, I'm glad to see that. Very good. It's very important. Uh, so, uh, one of the things that's in 4.2 is just a really beautiful uh, UI. And uh, one of the questions that's being asked here is, how is engineering improving the share experience? Are there UI design teams? Um, it seems like there, there are still some things that require many clicks to get simple tasks done. So, what are we doing to... Uh, continuously improve the share experience, I guess, is the question. Can you hear me? It's a complete mic failure on the final session of the no, last no, no. day. It's been a sterling job. It's not their fault. <laughs> I, I was probably sitting strangely on it. My ass is too big. Um, <laughs> I need to get out more. Um, so, so just so people understand. Is that better? Yeah. Just so people understand, um, there is a UX a user experience team within Alfresco. Um, it's a relatively small team. Um, experience, they've, they've worked uh, you know, in a range of different industries, a range of different organizations, doing mobile, doing web, um, uh, sort of, uh, and you know, even old school uh, thick client um, UX. Um, so that team uh, does look at the whole side of the user experience. Um, which is, you know, the jump we've done from the the four zero four one UI of, of share to the four two. That there is a significant, you know, change there. There was a lot of consideration put into where do we minimise, you know, things to how do we make the the, the sort of experience a bit simpler and consolidate. Um, uh, and we are continuing to grow that team. So there is, you know, I'm just showing one of the guys now. We've we've had someone accept an offer and they're going to be starting beginning of December. Another person joined the UX team who is going to be focused specifically on share. So, uh, so yeah, we do have a UX team. They are very concerned about how stuff looks and how many clicks it takes to do things, um, and that's going to be part of you know the, the continuous improvement. And I know you know amongst the engineers that there's also a bunch of stuff that people want to do to to, to continue to improve to improve share as well. So, okay, great. Um, this next one is about uh, IRC, and the, uh, as I mentioned this morning, we have Pound Alfresco and Freenode IRC, and there's generally about 35 people at any given time uh, hanging out in IRC, and uh, sometimes it's quiet and sometimes it's extremely lively. So uh, the question is, when are you going to start logging the IRC chat? R Richard, I think that question's for you, actually. Oh, I gotta move this way. So the no, answer is, we're done with Summit. We can have time to do things, <laughs> and that's what I'm. Doing. All right, great. So it, it's a common request, and we have been meaning to do it for a while, and we need to get it done. All right, that sounds good. So by next Friday, we should have that turned on, <laughs> and that'll be great. So thanks for committing to that, Richard, in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so uh, great. So this next one, I think, is a little tough to answer in this format, but I'll, I'm going to throw it out there because maybe there are some resources or uh, recommendations that you want to make. Um, so are, the question is, are there any plans or recommendations around supporting a globally distributed architecture uh, for Alfresco? And this, was, this question was asked twice um, in, in, by different people at various ways. So um, I, I guess this would mean things like... Um, um, replication around uh, <laughs> geographically distributed um, network and maybe things like that? Yeah, so um, w what I would suggest is first uh, talking to our services organization about that and discussing with them because they can take current best practices. And um, these are some of the things that we're exploring for the next version and the version after that, which will probably feed that whole process and we'll feed that and discuss. and. 
uh, with the services organization as well. You know, so we've talked about things like federated and different types of search and what do we get out of solar as well and, you know, and also the whole area is changing, um, you know, as, as more tools start to adopt things like CMIS and stuff like that. So um, I can't say that, you know, I, I can't say here's the answer right now because one size does not fit all. Um, I, I know that from my documentum days that one size does not fit all. Uh, it really depends on use cases and stuff like that, which is why you have to talk to the services organization. But you know, we'll, we'll probably be coming up with more recommendations as time goes on, and you know, the knowledge base should be a, a good place to find that as well. Okay. I hope that answered the question because I know there's, that's not an answer. The answer is talk to services. I hope that person also uh, maybe raised that question down at the Alfresco Experts Bar because that would also be, have, it's closed now, but uh, hopefully <laughs> that would have been a great time to, uh, to have that conversation too. So hopefully you took advantage of that. Um, okay, the next one, let's we'll do a couple more uh, share and surf questions here. So what are the plans around uh, 508? You, uh, John mentioned uh, 508 compliance, in the, and uh, I think it's been m mentioned a couple of times. So will we be providing an alternative uh, client, or are we just adding 508 compliance to the existing share client? And um, sort of what are, are there any specific plans around 508 that we could share? Yes, maybe Dave. Do you want to take that? <laughs> what, what number is it? It's number five. Anything? Oh, there Anything. we go. Oy. Um, yeah, so uh, I think we recognize now that we've got to take um, 508 compliance very seriously. It's not just um, 508 compliance. It's, there's other standards as well. Um, what we probably won't do is go back through the existing share application and just uh, and, and add um, compliance to that straight away because we need to continue to move share forward. So... One of the things we want to be doing is we want to, we're building out a new um, widget library, and as we build each of those um, widgets, we're writing them with accessibility in mind, and we're trying to make sure we reuse those through the application. So not only will we, will we be providing um, a, 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 com, a 508 compliant or an accessible uh, interface, but we'll also be providing you with the tools um, to create your own interface and to customize share to, and make it easier for you to ensure that um, it is accessible. So yeah, we, we, everything we do now going forward is going to be um, written with accessibility in mind. So, so, so ready. Not, number nine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so the, the plan is not to write a completely new client. It's really to, within share, evolve share, and as we write new, you know, as we talked about, you know, new capabilities, as the UX changes, We'll implement that in the new way rather than just sticking with the old way. And as we do stuff in the new way, it will gain the, the sort of the accessibility capabilities in there. So there's no rewrite share. Um, there's no sort of uh, go with the existing share and just go and do a, a sort of 508 W3C blat on it. It's, a, it's an evolutionary thing. So it's going to take some while. But I mean, we, we, Dave and his, his, a few of the others have been working hard on this. There's a lot of work that's already gone into this. If you haven't seen, Dave's talk, then take a look at that and you'll get an idea of what he's talking about, about, about the widgets and the gadgetry. Um, that stuff is just going to come into the, the next release and then you know a couple of release cycles and uh, it's an evolutionary thing as we take, share the application sort of framework forward. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do one more spring uh, surf question and then we'll take a question from the audience. So um, get, get ready to ask your question. Um, so the question is uh, simple. Somebody asked, is Spring Surf still being invested in as a platform for UI development? Um, <coughs> am I still on? Yeah, okay. So um, the answer, the simple answer to that is yes. Um, I will quickly say that uh, uh, I did mention it in, in one of my talks that um, um, Surf has actually come back from um, Spring Source back into the Alfresco SVN, um, but currently it's on a private trunk. Um, and what we're looking to do is um, make it a, a more of a peer project with the rest of Alfresco, whereas before, we previously, we've been just taking snapshots of Surf um, for, the, for each release. But um, we'll actually start to branch it properly, and it'll be you know, like a, a more of a peer project. And although you won't have been able to see it because it's been going on for sort of 
privately, there's been a lot of work um, going into Surf, updating things like the um, the Apache HTTP clients, things like that, updating the um, the Rhino engine, all of these things. So there is um, uh, continued investment in Surf, and I don't think there, that's going to change for a while. Will that be a um, uh, an open project similar to how Activity runs, or will it will it be private on only on the um Oh, sorry. So it's not intended. The only reason it's um, the only reason it's private at the moment is basically because Spring Source gave us a very short deadline, um, mm. and we just had to, to to clone the SVN repository and put it somewhere. Um, and the reason we haven't just put it straight in as a, as a peer project is because um, Surf is built using Maven, um, and Alfresco is still built using Ant. Although Samuel over here is um, is going to be changing that, or is in the process of changing that. So once uh, we're taking a full build of, uh, of Alfresco from Maven, then we can much more easily slot Surf in alongside it. Cool. <clears throat> that sounds awesome. Is, are we going to put it on GitHub or Google Code, or what are you, you don't know yet? Okay. And also, Samuel, thanks for getting the uh, Alfresco build moved over to Maven by next Friday and committing to that to everybody uh, in, in here publicly. Just kidding. That's not what he committed to at all. Uh, okay, so does anybody have a, uh, a question in well, the audience? Actually, maybe maybe Samuel could talk about. Oh, that'd be great. The plan for yeah, what is the plan? You got one in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> it probably sure would. That's number six. He's got so much to say. He needs two microphones. Um, so yeah, the the, the build is uh, changing a lot. I've been putting a lot of work on improving the magnification of the of Alfresco. Still ongoing. Uh, currently, we have a kind of dual build. So the official build of a community and enterprise is still built with Ant. Uh, but Cloud, for instance, is built with Maven. So it's the same code, but we build it with Maven. We publish the artifacts uh, with the POM files, with all the dependencies. So you guys can actually use Maven to extend Alfresco in a very um, convenient way. Uh, the next step is probably, yes, to uh, actually do the, do the move to, to, to a proper Maven build. Uh, it's not there yet. Uh, we have to plan that. Um, maybe next Friday we'll uh, <laughs> start planning on that. No. Yeah. There's, there's still a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> not my call. <laughs> no, there's still a bit of work on that. Um, not everything is Mavenized yet. Um, I need to train all these people. Um, so. Uh, yeah. Cool. Come Speaking of uh, Mavenization, um, the uh, there was a talk. Was it in uh, Peter's talk, where, uh, or maybe it was Gab's talk? But I guess it doesn't matter. The point is, um, we're trying to get everyone to use the Maven SDK, and we're trying to convert the existing SDK that's downloadable, uh, so that those are all Maven builds. And um, I've started to convert all of the uh, ECM architect tutorials over to Maven builds as well. So I'm in the middle of doing that. So Mavenization is happening not only in the Alfresco builds, but in a lot of the examples and SDKs. And a lot of that work is possible because of Gab Columbro. So you should, uh, you should, we should all thank Gab for. <laughs> it's taken a long time to get to get where we are. So that should be recognized. Um, all right, so who has, a, uh, who has a question in the audience? Everyone is going to be shy, or here comes one. All right. Coming, coming, coming. <laughs> Hi, thanks. Uh, so this is kind of just a general poll for everybody on the panel. Um, what is the uh, single most difficult challenge, technical challenge you're facing right now, either right now or maybe recently? Um, Wow. I, I imagine that that will vary depending on who's answering the question. I, I think there is a, a technical challenge that we're facing at the moment that we need to address quite quickly, and that's the build time. Um, at the moment, for 4.2, we increase the number of JUnit tests that run by about 20-odd percent and the build time has gone up about 20-odd percent as well. Uh, so it now takes around about nine hours for us to get through a build, and certainly I would like to see that come down quite considerably just so that we can be more agile in how we develop stuff. Okay. Anyone else want to throw theirs on the, out there? 
So, so, so externally, you know, you know, sort of sitting away a bit from the, the developers, a couple of areas that I think before too that, that stick in mind. One is the clustering. I mean, that was a huge piece of work where we we put in a new clustering and caching infrastructure, uh, sort of which Matt really took the, the hit for. That was a significant piece of, of work, and actually making sure we'd done it right and kicking the hell out of it to, to make sure it, it did work. So for me, that was one of the, the big technical challenges in the four too. I think the stuff Andy did on, um, Andy Hind, on the query, um, the transactional query side of things, again, we had to go through quite a few iterations of that to make sure that, that it worked and that it scaled and that it worked across all the databases and things like that. So, so there, there are a couple of quite deep, gnarly, um, big changes in, in four too. And I think some of the stuff that, that Dave's been doing in the UI and, and taking share and trying to change that from the inside. So, so if people have got customizations with the share existing, you know, those still exist and still work, but you can start using this, these new gadgets and this new framework. So there's a couple of really significant changes there. And then, and then some of the other stuff that you guys won't have seen yet, which is the stuff that's going on behind the scenes with some of the cloud the SaaS stuff. I think there's a, a bunch of, you know, real interesting technical Things. And you know some of the other guys, you know, Ray's been getting involved in some of making some of these super scalable. You know, there, there's a lot of good challenges that, that everyone's involved in in some different way. And there's a lot more still to come. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> oh, records management, awesome, Roy. Yeah, yeah. Roy. You know, the, the people that have been working on that just absolutely phenomenal. You know, individuals just doing screaming stuff. And, and we we have a really large installed base, so I, I have to assume that. Um, upgrades and backward compatibility are always going to be a challenge and one that we have to invest in very heavily because, you know, we don't want to break you guys while we're adding new features. Speaking of uh, <clears throat> records management, I just, I love the demo yesterday when uh, it's like, you know, we've been, you've been using records management this whole time and you didn't even know it, that little, the twist at the end, I thought, I mean, that was just, it's such a good way to sort of underline the Simple power. Simple plus of, smart. Exactly. That's the best way to say it. That's the best way to say it. Um, OK, well, here's a repeat. So this question, uh, I'll be accused of just recycling questions from Barcelona, but this actually is a fresh question from Boston. It's just the same question. And the question is, are you <laughs> I'll try not to explain these so much anymore. Uh, are you, uh, I'm getting tired. Are you considering adding uh, MariaDB to the Alfresco installer? So I answered that in Barcelona, so, so anyone else here should be able to answer it now. Oh, interesting, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to stick their neck in that noose. Um, so the answer is we're looking at it. Um, you know, there's a, a bunch of uh, Linux distributions now that are switching to that, Red, Red Hat Enterprise and things like this. So um, what is the answer? The answer is going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be based on the customers wanting it and needing it and, and asking for it. Um, so it's something that we're aware of. You know, we've got good relationships with the people and the individuals involved there. We're, we're tracking what's happening there. I mean, you know, John can talk to, to what's happening around that, that space and the, 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 the sort of merger of, of businesses that, that's been going on behind that. So we're looking at it, and it really is going to be driven by demand from the customers um, as to you know, when we switch and if we switch and how we switch. Yeah. How many people would use Maria if it was supported? You'd use Maria instead of MySQL. So pretty still, it's about the same percentage as was in Barcelona, it seems Yeah, like. so I mean, a lot of people are using it, you know, to develop stuff on, but it's, you know, who's going to put it in a data center? Yeah. And I think people are happy putting MySQL in a data center, but I, I'm, you know, it's a brave data center manager who's going to say, yep. Yeah, you know, I, know of, I know of uh, some, there are people, I think, maybe still in this room that, are, that have been running it in production and haven't had any problems. Of course, that's not supported, but that's uh, well, It's a nice community promising. project to get it in place. You know, if, if, you know, if someone in the community gets a, a sort of a, a arrangement of it working, then you know, that, that again helps feed demand. So yeah. that, that's, to me, part of what the community edition is all about. Yeah, Don't that's wait true. for us to do it. Um, OK. Any, uh, are there any other questions from the audience before I go on to the next one? Bindu's got one. Um, what's the status of desktop sync? Desktop sync is currently being worked on. Right now it's being worked on. So the engineers who are working on desktop sync didn't come to Summit because they're working on desktop sync. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
We uh, are expecting to get desktop sync out in the first quarter of next year. Um, the version that we put out in beta, uh, we found some scalability issues with, and we didn't want to go out on a, with a proper production version of that with those issues. So we're working hard on correcting those problems and putting in some server-side capability to support <coughs> large numbers of, of desktops all wanting to sync, uh, which is not a, a trivial problem to solve. Um, so that's the plan. Make um, it better and then release it. So, so the fact that Brian answered that, not me, says that you know it's really happening. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I also want to say that uh, the way Bindu asked that question is much more polite than the way it was written. Uh, for, so I don't know. Uh, I appreciate that. I don't know whether you, you wrote the other one or not. But um, there are multiple questions about desktop sync. Um, let's see. So uh, what, um, what are the options that you're thinking about for um, letting partners extend Alfresco WorkDesk? Are there any, is there anything in particular that, we, I mean, it's obviously, it's configuration over code, so anybody could go in and create uh, extensions of WorkDesk, right? So it's really, oh, what number? Uh, the, number what four is, is talking Number four? <laughs> no, no, no. Number four? Just hand them this, uh, there we go. <laughs> okay, number yeah. nine, number, number nine. nine. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Basically, we just um, are delivering a first turnkey solution for contract management with WorkDesk. It was just released, or we are just releasing it. Um, and it's not only a turnkey solution, but also a template for partners and customers um, to build their own solution. And the idea behind this is um, to enable and, and encourage our partners to, to build especially solutions for, for uh, special verticals. Um, and bring in their domain knowledge and also a horizontal solution. So go ahead and start building solutions. Okay, sounds good. Um, this is a question about content modeling. Um, are there any plans to add support for repeating groups of properties on content models? Uh, this one comes up a lot, so. I think the only <coughs> real answer to that is no. Um, <laughs> not yet. I, I, no, not... you never say no, Brian. You, you say <laughs> it's in Doug the road said now. No yesterday. <laughs> Ten years from now. <laughs> it is actually, you know, this this came up at Documentum as well. Um, you know, because really, what you know, it's a content management system. It's not an object modeling system. And you know, there's limits to what we can and should be doing with, with the data model. I think what's far more pressing is to make it easier for business analysts and ordinary human beings to create data models. And that's much higher on our priority right now than, than extending the modeling. You, know, you, you have associations and you've got all sorts of capabilities in the model already. So if you really want something that sophisticated, then you know, I, I, you can go down that route. It's, you're, it's possible to do, but we want to focus on the simple rather than the complex. So, so no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't use the word no, Brian. <laughs> You'll learn. <laughs> uh, and I believe, I don't, I know some partners have, I mean, just about everybody has had this problem or this uh, challenge when they've, uh, implemented a content model. So people have different ways of addressing this. Uh, and I don't know if anyone's done this and listed it in addons.alfresco.com or not, but if anyone has done it and would like to make it open source, then we could all uh, benefit from it. But I do think it's, I do think it's more common, uh, you know, for even just doing like city-state zip and, and having multiple city-state zips, multiple addresses, uh, is not really easy to do out of the box right now. So. Um, yeah, so it can't be done at the user interface level, right. which is the way that a lot of people ended up doing it in Documentum. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's always possible to do. It's software. Yeah, yeah right, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a question about CMIS. So uh, do we want to get the microphone situation going while I ask the question? 
Um, so will Alfresco's implementation of Seamus query language get join or subquery support at some point? So obviously you can do joins to do aspect types of queries, but other than that, joins aren't supported. So uh, is there any plan uh, to add join or subquery support? Well, I've just heard I should never say no. <laughs> 10 years is an option. Um, but at the moment, we're, we're, not, we're not working on that. We have spent a lot of energy this year on getting up to speed on Seamus 1.1. And part of the process for doing that was picking up the Apache chemistry, the open Seamus libraries, and putting them into Alfresco so that we have a better framework for doing, adding things like that now. But to, to be honest, we don't have no immediate plan for doing that. I'd like to hear um, from whoever asked that maybe what the use case is. I don't, as far as subqueries, I thought the spec was actually restricted the subquery support in, in the SEMA SQL uh, syntax. So I don't think we'll do anything there. But uh, for joins, that's certainly a possibility now that we're up to speed on open SEMAs. OK. Uh, this is a related question. They're asking about uh, where they can find source code examples for working with Seamus uh, via PHP. And so um, those examples do exist. Where's Rich McKnight? So what's the best place? Did you go to the chemistry website to th see those examples? There's also a book out, I've heard, that's pretty decent about uh, CMIS uh, that, had, that covers PHP. And actually, Richard McKnight wrote the section on PHP in the book. So thank you for that. And, um, Anything else you want to say about it? Yeah, we, we have a couple of examples on the chemi Apache Chemistry website, so you can go there and get them. Um, feel free to send me an email if you've got questions also. Uh, sort of on a, a related topic, uh, somebody asked... And a, a quick plug for Ian Norton's Siemens Views project at Drupal.org. That's got a lot of examples of how to interact with PHP from Siemens through PHP. And I was just going to mention that so people have been asking sort of how, uh, you know, all the presentations from all of our sessions are available on summit.alfresco.com. And if they're not, they should be soon, right, guys, speakers? Uh, but I think almost all of them are out there. And the way that works, just at a very high level, really quickly, because people have been asking, uh, we have an Alfresco in the Cloud site called Speaker Resources. And we have more than 100 speakers between the two cities. And all of them belong to that Cloud site. They upload their presentations into a <laughs> folder. We then use hybrid sync to sync those presentations down to Alfresco on-premise. And then we use Drupal and the Seamus Views module to, uh, I believe we're using Seamus Views. Where did Ian go? I'm yes, not we sure. are. OK, Seamus Views to pull the uh, presentations out of uh, Alfresco and then make those available on, Dru on the Drupal site, which is summit.alfresco.com. So um, sort of using all of our technology and cool Alfresco Drupal integrations to make that happen. So I think that's. Uh, you know, a really good use case, and it's worked out great for us uh, to manage the conference. Um, let's see. Well, let's take another question from the audience. Anyone? Hmm. People are growing tired. Of course. Um, so we've done a bunch of work uh, to get hot redeployments working with Alfresco. So as we're doing development, um, you make a code change, and it's live in the running system within about 10 seconds, um, which is amazing from a productivity point of view, trying to do development about against Alfresco. Uh, one thing that we've not been able to get lo to load dynamically are content models that are in the class path. So we can, we can push them through uh, the repo, through the data, data dictionary, but there's some concerns about compatibility doing it that way, and when we deploy them for customers, we want to do it through the class path. Is there a way, or can there be a way, to reload uh, content models dynamically without restarting Alfresco? And you'd be OK if that required uh, JRebel or other, other tools yeah. and things like that? For, for development specifically, not for production. So for development, for development purposes, is that something we could Take he care of. I that. see some heads uh, nodding, I'm, but I'm thinking either Derek or Andy. Do either of you want to? Yeah. Uh, it's I number four. It may may not be working. Now it's nine. I I don't see it as a particular too much of a technical challenge to actually get it done. So you know, if the requirement is there, if 
you know, if we know exactly what needs to be done, then we can probably build something in to do it. Uh, I, I, I can't see any particular issue with reloading and stuff, no. Okay. We just have to feed it up into uh, one of those guys to make it happen. <laughs> see, you didn't say no. <laughs> Um, all right. So, so I guess it goes to the product managers as a as a requirement as part of continuous improvement. Well, or if someone does it, you know, in the community and contributes it. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we how, any pointers for how to do it, and well, I'll do it and contribute it. There we go. So, so Perfect. Yeah. Talk with Derek. You know, you know Derek. <laughs> uh -huh. Have you guys met? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's Bindu. <laughs> <laughs> this is Derek. <laughs> Let's, let's make something cool. <laughs> All right, great. Um, so somebody's asking, um, uh, can we publish documents or white papers that provide uh, details or guidance on sizing, the sizing a repository? I believe this document actually exists. And I think it's been proposed to be released as public. I don't see a reason why we couldn't do that unless somebody else. Yeah, there is a, a yeah, it's in yeah. the services organization. Gab, do you want to mention anything about it? Coming, coming, coming. Here comes Richard. So, uh, well, yeah, I, I wrote a paper that is actually now since two years in the services organization. There's been discussions, as uh, Jeff mentioned, to actually open it up. Uh, I am personally uh, in favor of that. I think uh, it will also be a very good tool to well, actually... Okay, done. Awesome. Man, we are getting stuff done. This I'm is the best meeting ever. <laughs> this is great. By Friday. Right, that's good. <laughs> Not by Friday, it'll be, it'll be up there. So. How many things are going to happen next Friday? This is going to be great. Um, okay, great. So that's, that's wonderful. Um, good. So let's see. I think I'm kind of running down to the end of the questions here, so I'll open it up one more time to, uh, to the floor and see if anybody else has anything to ask. Tony? Uh, so through the MBeans and the JMX console, if you're modifying properties, is there a way to revert back to modifying those properties in alfresco global.properties if you set something in the JMX? Because right now, once you set it, then you have to continue to update it there. That's a good question. I can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yes, you can. Um, actually, in the JMX console, if you use the reset action, it will revert back to the, whatever's in your Alfresco global dot properties. All right. Thank you. Excellent. Was, was that the question? <laughs> Wait, is there disagreement about uh, that? Or? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> once you've, yeah, number nine, once you've started using the admin console, then, um, then no, changing the, the global dot properties won't take effect. It supersedes it. Challenge extended. Uh, <laughs> challenge accepted. So uh, we've just added a new session to the agenda, folks. Uh, right after this, we'll be doing some testing. And if you want to get in on that, it'll be happening right over here at Bindu's table. Um, very cool. All right, another question. Richard has yeah. somebody. Yeah. Uh, so I have a fundamental question. I've been, I, I came from documentum world. And when I was in documentum world, I realized, realized there are so many moving parts, like laptop, content server, JMS, database, so many things. Now we started working on Alfresco. I realized it's more moving parts. So we have Share, Alfresco app, Solar, and Solar app. And there are too many things that are intertwined. And is there a way, I'm not sure, I mean, it's a right, valid question, is there a way to minimize the number of moving parts? I don't know if it's fair to say that Alfresco has more moving parts than Documentum. I mean, no. I feel well, like Alfresco is it's one of the few ECM platforms you can run on a single node. Uh, so I think it scales down really well as well as in addition to being able to scale out. Um, I think we are, if I may, just we're dividing things up into subsystems and for scalability, but we never lose that ability to still run it on you know, consumer grade hardware for developers and things like that. So I, I sort of a little bit reject the premise, but I, I'd let somebody else uh, answer the question as well. So maybe, maybe, Greg, I don't know if you agree with me. We're probably going to actually, I think things are moving in, in the way of 
adding more moving parts rather than fewer. So, uh, you know, it, it just allows you to scale out much better. I'd be surprised if we start clobbering everything into a great big pile ever again in, in the software world. I certainly hope not. Yeah. 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 And, just and to add to me that. coming from the documented world, there, there were a lot of moving parts. And, you know, you mentioned solar. There's always the index engine that, you know, that Documentum also has to have. So all those parts have many different parts. Sorry. What, What's, what's cool about our moving can parts we, is that you can okay. open them up and see exactly what's going on. Yeah. And so, yep. you know, I, don't, that's some, I hope that's some consolation. And also, welcome. And we're glad you're here. And we hope you don't have to return back to that world. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very lonely over there. <laughs> that's right. It's getting lonely here, yeah? Very cool. All right. Uh, yes, Ian's got a question. Yeah. Um, we uh, have been really pleased to see the improvements in uh, the Google Docs integration in 4.2. That's, that's some really cool stuff. But one of the most common questions we get is uh, share calendar integration with Google Calendar um, because we use calendar, Google Calendar for everything else in our organization. And people are right in you know, two or three times a month saying, how come the calendar and share isn't just a Google Calendar? So I just. Uh, wondering any thoughts about that or if that's something we might see in the future. Uh, I, I would say we just got to add it to the list. Uh, I, I, there, there are no specific plans around that. Although I, did, I didn't use the word no outright in that last sentence. <laughs> Must stop. There aren't any specific plans <laughs> uh, around that and we'll add it to the list. That would be another opportunity for a community contribution. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Set it for you. you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, why doesn't Ian do it? Uh, Amy wants to know why, why don't you do that, Ian? Because you really don't want me writing code. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody else? Nope. All right, well, before we, uh, before we close, I just want to say um, I really am uh, happy with how Alfresco Summit turned out in both Barcelona and Boston. And, uh, and number one, we couldn't do it without our sponsors. And there are a ton of sponsors here in the room. And so I just want to say thank you to our sponsors for making this possible. I also want to say thanks to the speakers. As I mentioned, we had over 100. Richard, what's the, what's, how many unique speakers did we have between the two events? Would it be 120 or? Uh, it, it was over 120 and under 140, but I don't remember exactly it's where it is. Somewhere went. around there, which I think is just uh, amazing. And I appreciate all the contributions that the speakers have made. Also, I've, been, I've re received a lot of feedback from people saying that the quality of our talks is getting better and better every year, and the quality of the delivery from the speakers is getting better every year. And it's something that we're working on, so it makes me feel good to hear that. Um, I also need to call out Andrea Caldwell. She's standing in the back. She has a white shirt on. She is the one that worries about all the details. Every, if you've seen a little detail and you're like, wow, they thought of that, it's because of Andrea. So if you are doing events from size you know, 10 to 5,000, and you need someone to help you with that event, call Practical Productions and call Andrea. I can't recommend her highly enough. And I, it's been our third year working together, and we knew each other before that. So you're, you know how I feel about you. You're awesome. So it's been great. Um, Richard Esplin took care of the business tracks, which was new for us uh, this year. And I think he did a bang up job, as well as the lightning talks. If you add all the lightning talks, that's almost a conference worth of speakers in itself. How many people made it to at least one set of lightning talks? Almost everybody in the room. And uh, I, every time I go, I'm just amazed at the, at the quality of those talks and the timing that people rehearse and the way that that is delivered. So if you, if you miss some lightning talks, you know, check out the recordings. We should have those published uh, here in the first couple of weeks of December. Um, I have a ton of people to thank. Joe Tong for sponsorships, Ben for helping with uh, reaching out to customers, Gretchen, Lindsay, Kathleen. There, there are a million people, not literally, uh, at Alfresco <laughs> uh, that, that helped put on this event. And so uh, again, thank you very much. I hope you guys have had a great week. And safe travels home. <laughs>